What is logic? Let's think about what it means to think logically in contrast to what it think means to think illogically. And let's use a story to do this. Imagine you're a detective for a homicide department and you've been called in to investigate a murder. You arrive at the Beverly Hills home of Mr. Starr and um, you, the butler shows you into the living room and you see laying on the floor Mr. Starr's body with two bullet holes in his chest and your associates are photographing the living room, fingerprinting the living room. You talk to the butler, the butler tells you that uh, Mr. Starr's daughter, who is his only living relative and heir, was here last night and now she's disappeared and he doesn't know anything else because he went to bed early and woke up this morning to find the body. So if you were logical, what would you do with your mind at that point? Um, well, you might think, I've got to get people to find the daughter so I can talk to her. Um, I need to look around the house. I'm going to look for clues. I'm going to um, uh, talk to other people who might have information. I'm going to gather all this evidence and I'm going to then get further evidence and so on. So if you were logical, those would be some of the things that you would do with your mind, right? Um, you would gather clues, you would talk to witnesses, um, you would um, keep gathering evidence, um, considering all the possibilities, etc. contrast, suppose you were an illogical detective. What are some things you might do with your mind? Well, um, let's suppose at the beginning of the story, uh, you hear about the daughter. She's going to inherit money from her father, and she was here last night, and you say, she's guilty, let's arrest her. Would that be logical? Um, no, you don't have enough evidence yet. We call that jumping to a conclusion. Or suppose, for example, you meet the daughter and you talk to her and you find her very sweet and attractive and you, you just kind of feel that you don't want her to be guilty. So you say, it must be somebody else. Would that be logical? Uh, no, we call that blindly following one's emotions. Or let's suppose you call your boss at... Um, the homicide department, and you tell your boss some of the information, and your boss says, um, it's the butler. And you say, okay, it must be the butler. I'm going to arrest the butler. Um, that would not be illogical either. That would be illogical. Um, and we would call that blindly following an authority figure. Or let's suppose you go to all the neighbors. The neighbors know these people and you ask each of them, who do you think did it? And you find out that most of them think it was, I don't know, the brother um, of the butler or something like that. And you say, okay, must be true. Um, that's what most of the people think. Of course, that would be illogical and we call that blindly following the majority. So here we have an example of the difference between logical and illogical thinking. Um, and what is the basic principle here what in, that is the difference between the two? And I hope you see that it's evidence, right? That's the first basic principle of logic. Um, if we're thinking logically, we gather information from the world, we gather facts, um, we're constantly trying to get all the facts and putting them into an understanding of what really happened and then we're checking it back against the fact and we're using our observations um, to do that, we're using experts to do that, we're gathering evidence. Okay. And in contrast, if you 
don't do that, right? If you just say, oh, whatever first idea I have, that must be true. Or you say, oh, I feel this, so it must be true. Or so-and-so says it, or the majority thinks it, so it must be true. You're not going by the evidence. You're not caring about the evidence. And that's being illogical. Um, and you're also gathering all the relevant facts, right? You're not just ga gathering some of them. You're making sure you investigate far enough that you get all the information that's relevant to deciding this particular um, issue. So that's the first basic principle of logic. But there's also one other principle of logic, and that has to do with how you process the evidence. And let me give the example here. Um, suppose, as the detective, you find out, okay, you know the daughter's going to inherit her money, and let's say you have significant other evidence against her as well. She was actually there around the time of the murder. Um, it was her gun uh, with her fingerprints on it that killed her father, and she has this motive of inheriting lots of money. Um, but then let's suppose you you talk to a lot of reliable people who know both the father and the daughter, and they all say that the daughter's not like that at all, that she really loved her father, um, she's devastated at his death, she doesn't really care about money, never really cared much about money, um, doesn't have any particular need to have more money, um, and can you just leave your mind like that? Can you say, the daughter killed the father and she did it in order to get his money and the daughter doesn't really care about money? Would that be logical? No, right? Why? Well, it's a contradiction and contradictions aren't logical, okay? And that's known as the second basic principle of logic, um, first identified by Aristotle. It's called the law of non-contradiction and the way that Aristotle stated it is like this nothing can be both a and non-a at the same time and in the same respect So for example, if you say the daughter at the very same time both was willing to kill her father for money that she, that she loved, cared so much about money that she could kill the father she loved, and also didn't care about money at the very same time, that's a contradiction and we that's impossible, right? The basic idea is that contradictions are impossible and so if we find one in our thinking, then we know that we made a mistake. We have to go back and fix that. So this is essentially what logic is. Logic is um, thinking in such a way, it's actually a science, right? It's an applied science of how do we need to use our minds so that we're always following the evidence, we're always sticking to the evidence, and we're doing it in a way that we do not commit any contradictions. Um, and if you want to have a powerful mind, um, that's, these are the two basic things that you need to do.